I see bricks and dust appear all scattered on the ground. Big, strong difference, just shattered like a bomb. Yes, we tear in the old tavern now. Now, where are we gonna go on a Saturday night? Because we tear. tavern used to be, folks. Tearing the Old Tavern Down by Miramashir's Aubrey Stewart on vocals, guitar, and bass. Helen Stewart on vocals, fiddle, and mandolin. Jim McDonald, percussion and resonator guitar. Thank you guys for that. The Old Ambassador. I remember that place well. Yeah, okay. We're going to just tell them we, uh, we're going to the bottom of the... Of the tray. Well, you just told them. Oh, yeah. We, <laughs> we turned everything upside down here. We went to the bottom of the tray to get the beginning and of you know the new what? year. It's actually, a good, uh, it's actually a good time to show that tray. So we've shown these before. These are Roger's homemade trays. A news, they're, they're designed, they were designed to fit a newspaper perfectly. This is what he has been storing things in. Roger worked with sheet metal, carpentry, 
many other things. That's the bottom of that tray. And the top of that tray, Raj, looks like this. I've shown those before. What do we have? That's the year 2000. And Roger's work, they're perfectly done. And that is what we're storing. That's what he is storing. So, welcome everybody. We're into episode 31. We're rushing through today because I got to go somewhere. Roger's getting yanked in all directions. We just had, uh, Roger and I just had a lunch, same lunch, separate houses. I was over there barbecue and I had come in and asked Roger if he wanted it. What did we have, Roger? We had a steak, spinach, mushrooms, broccoli, and a yam. And the only food that it was all whole food, a little bit of salt to season, a little bit of butter for the spinach mushroom combo, and a little bit of oil when I baked those yams. And it was a great little lunch. Yes, sir. I guess it was. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, you know, and it was a great little lunch. And then oh, I, was, I was getting a coffee after the gym today, and I was informed that... Um, Theodore Williston's wife passed away. Oh, yeah, Jean. Yeah. So Jean, she was formerly a Gregan, so we were at Theodore's last week. He must be very sad today. So right now, even though I already played some Theodore on a few episodes ago, uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna play something that I recorded on that day that, we did, that I didn't put into that. And it's a, it's a poem called Crossing the Bar by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Tennyson. And uh, Theodore, uh, we, we were informed that him and his wife, Jean, were able to recite many, many, many poems. He pulled out a book of poems that were all printed. And, you know, it's kind of a, a sign of intelligence, you know, like just to, to poetry is a powerful thing when you dig into it. And he read some of those for us. So I'll play that right now. Tell me true. Is my little lad, my L.A.U., the sailing with your ship? The sailor's eyes were dim with dew. Your little lad, your L.A.U., he said with trembling lips, What little lad, what ship? What little lad as if could be another one to such as he? Why, L.A.U., that took to the sea the moment I put him off my knee. It was just the other day the gray swan sailed away. The other day, the sailor's eyes stood open with a great surprise. The other day, the swan, his heart began in his throat to rise. Aye, aye, sir, here in the cupboard lies the jacket he had on. And so your lad is gone. Well, wow. my good mother, do you know? All that was twenty years ago. I stood on the gray swan's deck, and to the lad I saw you throw. That has made you sick and made you sad. Still with the gray swan crew, lawless the man is going mad. The best boy mother ever had. Besides, he sailed with the crew. What else would you have him do? And he never written a line, nor sent you word, nor made you sign yeah. to say he was alive? Hold. It was wrong and wrong as mine. Besides, it may be in the brine. And could he write from the grave? Tut, man. What would you have? Gone twenty years is a long, long cruise. Twas wicked, thus for your love to abuse. But if the lad is still alive and comes back home, think you can forgive him? Miserable man, you're mad. As I see you rave, what have I to forgive? The sailor's eyes Twist his shirt so blow, so blow, and from it within his ribbon drew a handkerchief. She went wild. My God, my father, is it true? My little lad, my L.A.U., my blessed boy, my child, my dead, my living child, 
Now. Oh, wow. Okay, thanks, Theodore. What a beautiful man, Raj. Uh, hopefully, we can get back up there and say hello to him again. He, I think he really enjoyed it. Oh, oh yes, he kept saying, make sure you come back. <coughs> yeah. And then one other thing is like, you know, I didn't take my little morning drive today. Uh, so there's no, I don't know what the tune is yet or where I'm going to go, but I have to go into town to get a birthday uh, card for my sister. I have an idea. I'm not going to mention it. So um, we shall see what that song is going to be. So we are in the year 2000. I just got a text message from our former neighbor, Kim Reshore, daughter of Margaret and Jackie. Jackie looks the same right now in his late 80s as he did when I was a kid. He just is calm. Kim Reshore is the calmest human being <laughs> in America, folks. So she was just saying that, that she caught on and, and has been watching. So thanks for the compliment, Kim Reshore. And uh, other people have been complimenting as well, Raj. Yeah. We're here, and I, you know, sorry to keep blabbing, but we're in uncle, my uncle Raj, dad's brother. My father passed away, his brother, in February. I've been home from Vancouver now for four and a half months or so. And this has been a great project for Roger and I to, to connect, to spend time together. It's intergenerational and we're doing it as a community building project. That's the only reasons we're doing it. We like our, our system here. We're doing it for those reasons, just to share with some people. Hopefully most of you people find it positive. If something does rub somebody the wrong way and there's some eye rolling going on, our apologies, but that's not the intentions. Of course, we're here just to uh, share show uh, our great Miramichi people and how capable they have been over the years and still are. And we're taking just a quick visit back into the recent past. Rogers collected decades and decades and decades and decades and decades of local history, mainly through the Miramichi Leader and the Miramichi Press. But we're going to, there's some Times transcript and telegraph journals and it's local history in the surrounding area. So Raj, how you making out today? Well, you, you made all that sound like I was in diapers. In diapers. Way back. <laughs> yeah. And you know what, Raj? I'm getting compliments on your clothing choices too. This is a nice combo here. This green oh, this is... with a little bit of burgundy, always a beautiful combination. The vest the other day got a couple of comments. That red shirt that's hanging back there, That everybody's <laughs> liking that one. And, uh, okay, so Raj, what do we got today? We're on year 2000, this is part two, and we're gonna try to get through his stuff. There's so much stuff, it's unbelievable. Well, we're gonna go back to New Year's Eve. Okay, on in 99, so just before the Y2K, when everything was gonna shut down, computer systems, and nobody, we weren't gonna be able to control it, and all of a sudden the New Year rings in, and everybody seemed to be fine. So uh, what we're going to show you are, they're not clippings, they're complete sections of uh, the times on New Year's Eve. Okay. So we can start off with the rain. Okay, so this Earth. was, uh, this is what the, it was a Friday night, uh, December 31st, 1999, just before year 2000. And we're just gonna show you the front page. There's a beautiful, that looks like a cedar wax wing. Mm -hmm. And look at this, this was, these are just full, this is just before 2000 came in. This is Moncton Times. We're, we're going to get to the local pretty quick. Look at the beautiful photograph on that. I recognize that bird as I am a kind of like a, I'm a kind of like a closet bird guy. I always have made feeders. Show the carriers on the back and the top carrier. Okay. Uh, bringing our very best to you, Christopher Davis of Dieppe is our 1999 Carrier of the Year. Carrier delivering newspapers door to door. Roger's family here, all three of his kids were Times Transcript uh, delivery people. Amanda did it, Josh did it, Scotty did it. I did it for a short time. And you know, I, um, I didn't see it through. So it's kind of, you know, <laughs> but there's a beautiful uh, cedar wax ring. This is from New Year's Eve on 1999. Section B. Section B promises, promises, promises. You'd think after centuries of making New Year's resolutions, we'd be pretty perfect by now. 
And once again, the old, did you hear the one about the human being that made a New Year's resolution and stuck to it? Neither did I. So that's what they're getting at here. So this was also from New Year's Eve, Moncton Times, 1999. Oh, Roger just noticed that I didn't flip it over the right way. I saw him looking. Don't worry, you can't touch anything in here, but you can. It's like he has this perfect balance of don't touch anything, but you can touch it. It's hard to explain. <laughs> Playing the piano without his feet on the floor. Okay, this is from that same newspaper, 99. A worker tests a grand piano suspended from a crane Thursday while setting up the stage for New Year's Eve celebrations in Auckland, New Zealand. And this is a terrible um, story as well. I'll get to that. So there's that piano. And look at that, that's pretty cool. That was gonna be for New Year's in Auckland, New Zealand. And former Beatle, George Harrison, stabbed in chest. Man, those Beatles had a rough time with people. Knife-wielding intruder was obsessed with the Beatles, mother says. A knife-wielding intruder stabbed George Harrison on Thursday during a fierce struggle at his home, but the ex-Beatles wife may have saved her husband's life by clubbing the suspect over the head with a lamp, police sources say. Wow. That's ridiculous. And we all know what happened to John Lennon. There's George Harrison right there. And you know what, Rog? If I were to pick a favorite Beatle, George Harrison's my guy yeah. because my guy is Bob Dylan. Oh, yeah. And George Harrison was one of Bob Dylan's closest compatriots. They actually were able to connect very well. And George is underrated. I like George. <laughs> Maybe you can mention some of the ones that we lost. Here. Okay, some farewells in 99. Don't even know. This is coming into the year 2000. And you know what? Uh, interestingly enough, number 99, his career ended in 1999. I remember that game with the Rangers. Wayne's last game in Canada, I think, was played in Ottawa. That looks like Mike Weir. The Masters is starting right now. I just was over there. And is that the year that Mike Weir won the... Uh, nope. 99 was his first PGA win. Uh, and then there were some, some deaths in 1999 going into 2000 here. Greg Moore, he was the car racer, the Canadian guy. Uh, oh, Steve Chasson. He, I remember him as a defenseman. I didn't even, I, I did not know this. He died. Joe DiMaggio died. Uh... Doug Wickenheiser drafted first overall. He was, you know what, Doug Wickenheiser was a beautiful man. He had a lot of pressure on him, had a knee injury, didn't pan out as a number one. Wilt Chamberlain died. Walter Payton, the great running back for the Bears. Pee Wee Reese, the great shortstop for the Brooklyn Dodgers, who was one of the guys that welcomed in Jackie Robinson. And Jim Catfish Hunter, folks, he was an under he was a pitcher that didn't throw the hardest, but Mr. Man, he could win the games and get the outs. And Payne Stewart, uh, another golfer, died in I think it was a plane accident. So right on. Um, and then they have the highs of 99. Um, women's hockey. Captain Therese Brison of Fredericton and her teammates went to Espoo, Finland and won a fifth consecutive Women's World Hockey Championship, providing further impetus for the continued rapid growth, growth in the women's game across the country. And it's continuing to grow to this day. It's great. And you know what, Raj? Therese Brison was the captain of Team Canada in 99. When I was at university in Fredericton at UMB, she was uh, either studying, doing a PhD in like phys ed or a, t or a prof. Mm -hmm. And she used to come up and play the noon hour shinny with us. And I was oftentimes paired off with her on defense. I kind of started going back on defense. And so I got to know her and I was asking her all these questions. I was like, why you got like, you're the captain of Team Canada. And she was really kind of shy and really humble. And she fit in with us and did a really good job up there playing some uh, pickup hockey with us. And so did McCormick from uh, Blackville. She, yeah. she jumped in with us as well. Yeah. And they were great, they were great. Okay, this section here is just more or less uh, not too much, but they're showing a lot of uh, cartoons here. And maybe the lobster fishermen should pay attention to that. To, okay. So continuing on with this last episode of 99, working on the water. So Roger opens up and there's some, uh, the 
the cartoon. Of oh, Greg Perry's cartoon. Oh, yeah, Greg Perry's cartoon. So Greg Perry was a cartoonist out of the Moncton Times. Evolution of the Maritime Lobster Fisherman. There is a cartoon that Roger. So the Maritime Lobster Fisherman, those skulls right there, there's the evolution of the Maritime Lobster Fisherman. And so we're evolving into... I'm still trying to figure that out. Well, the face keeps going yep. out farther and farther, the shape of a lobster, I imagine. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I'm still, like, it, it's, uh, it might be, I might not be getting it. And you know what? Here's another one right here. Monica's story. Monica Lewinsky. Monica Lewinsky, the whole Bill Clinton thing, she was the one that her life was ruined. And I listened to her give a speech on that years later. She was in a very bad shape. You imagine being a young girl, there's a powerful man, whatever happened, happened. And then it was kind of when the internet was just starting. She was mobbed and attacked. And I actually think she deserves a lot of credit for withstanding the mob. And she's actually a really excellent person. And the speech that I listened to her give was actually very touching. And... Um, Pretty quick. Kids good. rooms blues. Okay, some more 99. These this is just the section of uh, the last ep the last edition of the Moncton Times, and then you see uh, it was Trudeau that died, right? Mm -hmm. Well, this is a popular leisure living section that okay. they, they often put out. And the Leisure Living was part of it. This is like one newspaper. Look at how times have changed. Newspapers are so much more thin now. Times have changed. Why, uh, who says you're old? Does being labeled a senior mean the best days of your life are over? So this was all about um, ageism and all that. One of the great courses I took in university was called The Sociology of Aging. I learned a lot. It opened my eyes up of what goes on in an aging community. And I was actually gonna play a John Prine, one of my favorite artists, a John Prine song. It's called Hello In There. And it's kind of uh, paying homage to older people that have that are in their homes and people don't recognize what's going on. It's a really sad, amazing song. It's called Hello In There by John Prine. Well, the world welcomes the year 2000. New Year's celebration highlights, folks. And there's the Eiffel Tower with some fireworks. Call me a party pooper, Raj. But I'm one of those guys that would rather look out over the river with no action and it's all quiet. I'm not the world's biggest firework fan. So We have nine more of these. Nine more of these. Happy 2000 from the Times transcript. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody gets excited for arbitrary dates that are made up by an animal that's half a chromosome away from a chimpanzee. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, who is this? Uh, doesn't say, no caption. No. Survival of body, not mind. Does this have anything to do with the... Um, yeah, it's all in the same. It's all in the same. 138 pages of the whole oh, thing. Oh, wow. 138 pages. It was talking about heritage recipes out of New Brunswick. Date pudding, lobster, mushroom, casserole, uh, potato bread, crumb cake, Christmas Eve fruit balls. And Raj was just showing he kept the newspaper from the Moncton Times. Uh, this this might, might be in the middle of a section. I yeah. Know. Okay, we'll get the front page here. Fighting the, the name of the Is this news? from the, uh, what, what newspaper is this? This is the Times. Fighting the Demon Drink. Early citizens saw booze as the root of all evils. This was on January the 1st, 2000. Uh, they're dumping barrels of alcohol out. This looked like it was part of the prohibition time. Oh, yeah, so it's just we're just trying to show how different times were. Mm -hmm. Like when newspapers were this, this is how people were getting it. This is before the advent of the smartphone. The internet, yes, was there, but it was not into prevalence like it is now. Uh, and there's uh, this woman here on, in the obituary uh, uh, page right there. Gladys Duncan on her skis right there. Folks, what a great photo. 
And this is from the same newspaper, Moncton, Many Things to Many People. There's an aerial, an artist's rendering of Moncton in 1880. That was an aerial, that's an artist's rendering of what Moncton would have looked like in 1880. The land, this land is our land. Does it really matter who was here first? Um, well... That, that that's still being fought over to this day. I'm of the uh, the thought patterns of yes, it's important to knowledge acknowledge history in the past, but we're never going to be able to move forward unless we move forward together in a positive way. We got to stop this canceling and pointing fingers and this moral high ground that people are playing. This culture war it gets us nowhere, um, and yeah, so. What, and this is another section of, uh, of celebrating the year 2000 coming in. Kitchen parties, source for incredible stories. That was on that page right there. The Miramichi Kitchen Party Raj. I gotta, that, I, I don't know, I, I gotta figure out when that place is open because it would be interesting to go down there and see what they're all about, Connie yeah. and Paul. And you have to show what's, what's inside some of these. Okay. Here. New Brunswick goes to war. So this is from January the 1st, the Moncton Times. Uh, they're just showing so much of the history. It was like a big event when the year 2000 came in. New Brunswick goes to war. It was in this section. War stories. Wow. Moncton man died saving others on the beaches of Normandy. Um, Jack Powell of Memorand Cook. Uh, you know, he was living by the tide. If you missed yep. the tide, you'd have to sit for nine hours until the next one came along. Yep. Really cool, Raj. <coughs> so after all, uh, <coughs> the new uh, year opened up. Yeah, and they take a look back at 1999. And then they just took a lot a look back. It was the year in review. This was out of the 2000, uh, the first edition of the 2000 Monks and Times. So the 99 year in review. There's Shania. Shania was kicking it up. She was big time. She still is big time, folks. And she's managed to hold it all together and keep moving forward. And she has been quite a force over the years, one of the highest okay. selling artists of all time. Open the middle up and show what the hell St. Michael's celebrated uh, the oh, well. millennium. And this is another one by Harold W.J. Adams. He seems to specialize in these special editions. And look how wide this is. Wow. St. Michael's. The Archangel, Archangel Basilica celebrating the millennium and the Jubilee year, January the 1st, 2000. And this is another edition from Harold Adams showing a historic uh, uh, little pamphlet, sorry, brochure, special edition, all of the bells right there over the years. Man, this Harold Adams is quite the guy, man. He was able to, um, and then like the, the, look at how beautiful, beautifully this was done. The pictures of all the stained glass windows. Wow, really cool. This is actually where my dad's funeral service was held. And it was kind of a very profound and surreal experience for all of us during that. So thank you, Harold Adams, for putting in all that time, all that effort to uh, celebrate and, and show us yeah. some history. And this is all probably part of the, part of that month in the oh, yeah. series. Oh, yeah. Okay. Here. So I'll just put that over there, and then we're going to be moving in to some local Miramichi, and I know who that guy is right there, folks. We have mentioned this fine gentleman many times before. On page, on the weekend. And if you're looking to uh, get this man's autograph, all you gotta do is look Roger Cummel's name up in the phone book. We get photocopies of this, then you go into the Knappen Bakery, and he might be sitting there having a cup of coffee. There he is, folks, Wolfgang Huxma. He was a top athlete. His father built a boat in the 80s. They come from obviously a very capable family, German. 
Uh, Wolfgang Huxma with his walking boots. Huxma tackling the 3,400 kilometer walk on the Appalachian Trail. It is just another example of Miramichiers getting out there and taking on the world. This guy is no joke. He's done uh, Ironman in Hawaii. He's done the Boston Marathon. And I remember as a kid my whole life driving up to Chatham and, you know, seeing this guy out exercising and uh, really, really challenging his body. Raj, you want me to put this on top? Like, it goes at the same? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And there's another sh shot of Wolfgang right there on the back of that. And that's him in action at the uh, Ironman in the fall. Wow. What a, what a guy, eh? What a guy, deserves a lot of credit, and I saw him jogging a couple of months ago, and I'm assuming it was a granddaughter. That looked like the age thing going on there. That's just the golf fever there. Okay. What's new? What's on tap on the maritime green scene? Well, I'm going to tell you who this guy is putting or getting ready to line up a putt. This was from Thursday, April 20th in the year 2000. This man came from Ontario. He, I think, got into real estate and it was a pro or whatever at the Moncton uh, Golf Course. What was that called again? Royal Oaks or something? Yeah, Royal Oaks. And that is one of Canada's greatest curlers and the world, uh, Russ Howard. And I watch curling and I think Russ Howard is an excellent commentator on the TSN broadcasts. He's really sharp. He's really smart. And that's Royal Oaks Director of Golf Sales, Russ Howard. Lines up a putt on the 13th green as club pro Jamie Van Wart looks on. Although the course is in great shape now, it will open on July 1st as officials want conditions to be perfect. And now getting back to that word perfect, Yogi Berra, the great catcher of the New York Yankees, you know what he says about the word perfect, Raj? If the world were perfect, it wouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't exist! No, no excitement with the wild cats. Okay, there. yeah, the cats run wild. Moncton ousts Quebec. I think they were the remparts to earn berth in conference final. This is Neil Hodge again. I used to sit beside him in the old Moncton Times newsroom. The Moncton, uh, their major junior team, they did a, they had a run in 2000. There's an action shot right there. Some young hockey players. And I'll tell you what, this is even a better action shot. Look at how excited they are jumping up into their team. I'll read this caption to let you know what happened. Moncton Wildcats celebrate following four-goal barrage in the third period of their seventh game victory over the Quebec Remparts last night at the Moncton Coliseum. Wildcats won the deciding game 6-4 to four to advance to the division final. Right on. It must have been an exciting time to be a hockey fan in Moncton. And our local team, the Timberwolves, and I, you know what, to be honest with you, I have not been uh, going up there and following this, and a lot of people are, but they got a big playoff game tonight. I think they're playing Edmonston, so right on. Banquet. Okay. Sports banquet. This is a sports banquet. Miramichi leader, April 18th, 2000. What is going on here? This is a sports banquet. I'll read some captions. Look at that healthy group of young folk obviously this guy was the centerpiece we'll find out who that is in one second i wasn't around the maramshi at that time i wasn't really knowing what was going on front morgan matchett jordan cripps grant donovan mason gaiman eric Hanna, jamie walls william morrissey Corey kelly jeffrey mccarthy jeremy mcdonald Stefan McLaughlin, the son of Riel and Jean of Beaverbrook, and Melanie Berry of South Esk, daughter of Kevin and Geralda. Who is this guy? Brandon Giberson, son of Susan, Joey McMillan, and... Okay, so Donovan chats with young fans at Hockey Banquet. Oh, sorry, that's Brad Muller. There, Okay, I'll get back to that. Upper Derby's Grant Donovan was the guest speaker at the Miramichi Minor Hockey Awards Banquet held at the Lions Center over the weekend. Donovan... A former Miramichi Town Mercury Riverman just completed his first season with the Junior Hockey Acadie Bathers T10, where he had 15 points on seven goals and eight assists in his rookie season in the Quebec Major Junior League. Right on. Grant Donovan. Sorry I didn't recognize you there. So in this picture, it's Brandon Giberson. 
Uh, he's the son of Susan and Zane, Joey McMillan, son of Virginia and Dale. And ladies and gentlemen, NHLer Brad Malone was 10 years old, the son of Vicky and Jim Malone. There's Brad Malone in the year 2000 at the sports banquet. Brad Malone is has had a really excellent professional career, many NHL games. He is a great guy, and he is very down to earth. And I think he just set a record um, for playing in the most games for the Bakersfield. I think it's the Baker Bakersfield Condors. Don't quote me on that. And he's a great guy, Logie Villar. We're from the office of the Planning Chatterman. Commission. The office of the Planning Commission. Okay, looking into the future, what will Miramichi of tomorrow look like? Well, unfortunately, the Miramichi of tomorrow, Raj, will not have the Vogue Theater, the old um, uh, museum, the uh, and several other places. But lots of things are happening on the Miramichi. So this is uh, the year 2000. There's, I'll tell you who that guy is in a second. And there's some photos of the Planning Commission. This guy right here, his name is Mike Davis. He plays music, and he actually did the music at my father's funeral. And we also have Wilson Bell. He was the director of Miramichi Planning District Commission. We have Gilbert Hashi and Aaron Hersoff. And then we have administrative assistant Juanita McKendrick. Right on, there's the administrative assistant. Great photo of Juanita McKendrick. I'll tell you what, if you had to get through to the city and she answered the phone, doesn't she look like she would be leading you into the right place? She looked lovely. Um, oh, right on. Uh, okay. Walking Mayor Rupert Bernard walked to the Super Bowl last Saturday. Bernard's new healthy lifestyle has seen him walk over 4,000 kilometers in past year. There he is, folks. Rupert Bernard. I still see him walking up in Chatham. That is a great photo. Thank you, Rupert, for putting on a red jacket. It's easier to see you. You got some nice black gloves on there, a little gray uh, accent. I like it. The hat's pretty sharp, too. This says, walking to the Super Bowl, Mayor Rupert Bernard is a very busy man. Prior to March 31st, he was working 40 hours a week and attending another 40 hours worth of meetings. That's a busy schedule, Rupert. When he wasn't tending to Sky Park business, he was tending to city business. It would be hard to find someone with a busier schedule. How then did he manage to walk 4,000 kilometers in 365 consecutive days from March 21st, 99 to March 21st, 2000? Simple, he scheduled it. Then he put one foot in front of the other, day after day after day. This says the story continues. I still don't understand the Super Bowl reference, but I'm sure there's something going on. That's a pretty cool shot right there. Don't know Rupert. I'm sure he was and is a great guy. Well, after spring training, when the season is about to start. Okay, 2000. We've talked about this fine gent many times. Just a good old Canadian farm boy right there. Jason Dixon in 2000. What a great action shot. The handsome and articulate Mr. Jason Dixon. Highly focused, highly capable. He will be on the mound tonight when his Anaheim Angels take on the Toronto Blue Jays in Anaheim. And this was April 12th, so it was the first couple of weeks of the season. Uh, he was impressive win in his first game back since shoulder surgery, and he gets a second start tonight against the Toronto Blue Jays. Right on. Well, that's just what we mean. Call ships into the area. Okay. Ships ahoy. Good timing means dozens of tall ships may land this summer. Key would, okay, so there it is. That's Derek Birchall, folks. Talking some ships, tall ships coming into our Miramichi port here. Our river is wide enough. The, can, the, the channel allows for big ships. It's a really great thing about this river. Good timing means dozens of tall ships may land this summer. And I, don't, I wasn't around in 2000, so I don't know if they did land. I think I remember hearing something of that. It was once said you could walk across the Miramichi on the decks of the tall ships that came here. That was more than a century ago. Now that would have been fun back in the old uh, days. We welcome 
We welcome this guy. Oh, yes, right on. Okay, first, uh, just a sec here. Two more sections now. Mm hmm. So, Miramichi. Fans remember the goal. There he is, folks. None other than the legendary Paul Henderson. A very, very gentlemanly and smart man. He scored arguably the greatest goal in hockey history to win the 1972 Summit Series between Russia and Canada over in Moscow. The first four games were played in Canada. The boys got a little humbled. They had to pack up their stuff and go over and take on Russia in Russia. And it's an amazing story, an amazing series. And that's Paul Henderson. It, uh, in 2000, he was in the Miramichi signing some autographs at the Lord Beaverbrook Arena. And that's Caitlin McDonald and Jacques Doucette of the Rivermen. Or get some. So right on. Very excellent. Paul Henderson. Full page. Full page on Paul Henderson. It is an amazing goal, but what people forget about Raj is although he scored the goal in game eight to win the series with, I think it was a minute and 56 seconds left, if I'm correct, and I'm sure somebody will correct me on that. Uh, he also scored the game-winning goal in game seven, the game-winning goal in game six, and Canada had to win all three of those games. Paul Henderson scored the winner in all three of them over in Russia. His life has, he said he talks about this goal every day of his life since. Everywhere he goes, he talks about the goal. And I challenge all of you hockey fans that don't know about this goal, that are younger, to go research it. And not only the game eight goal, but I forget what game it was, six or seven, he scored a goal that was highlight real material. He went through three guys, unbelievable. And uh, Shirley Erbo gets a shirt signed by Paul Henderson. And who else is here? Lisa Hare, Allison Hare, and Kyle Hare with Paul Henderson, and Gary Chavalry, Jordan Chavalry, get leaf banners signed by Paul Henderson. There are those people I just mentioned. And right on, there's the Hares. I think her name was Obi, Shirley Arbo, sorry, and then the other family right there. So Paul Henderson, Raj. Yeah. Awesome. So he's, on, he's among uh, some team, teams here. Okay. Uh, meeting a hockey hero, Canadian hockey hero, Paul Henderson, visited Miramichi last weekend. Lots of folks lined up to have their photos taken with him. It was Mayor Bernard's All-Stars, the Riverman captain, Peter Scott, Paul Henderson All-Stars, Rupert Bernard, and Kyle Hare and Councillor Reg Falconer. So there's Paul Henderson with some Miramichi hockey teams. Rupert Bernard's All-Stars, and Paul Henderson is a gentleman. He is very, very respected as a man, as a citizen in Canadian society. There, okay. The Ironman Claim Championship game. The Jean Coutu Ironman defeated Eagle Forest 4-1 in the championship game of the Adam Competitive League. So there's the photo of that. This gentleman right here played some pro hockey, and he played for the Packers. His name is Lowell Loveday. He was a great defenseman, saw the ice well, and he played for Moncton. Did he play in the NHL? Uh, maybe a couple of games. Don't quote me on that. Um, who was on this team, Raj, in 2000? Well, we have oh. Connor McDonald, Matthew Milson. He went on to play some high-level stuff in the area. Nigel Flett, Heather Ann Gallant. She was wearing the A. Uh, Matthew Goodin, or Gooden, Trey Cleghorn, Corey Shattuck, Robbie Berry, Lester Hardy, Mark Loban, Raj, mm -hmm. uh, Corey Hilchey, John Morrissey, Dennis Graham, Lowell Loveday, as we mentioned, Andy Hardy was the assistant coach, Matthew McDonald, Terry Cleghorn was the manager, Michael Burns, Randy McLean was an assistant coach, Greg Honor was the captain, and missing from the photo was Nick Hardy, who was the goalie coach. I see Nick up at the old gym once in a while working out, and we talk about how difficult it is when you get older to keep the weight off, and and the, the <laughs> keep story, the motivation. The story's right here. Okay. Board launched by Gima, earliest one in memory. The famous Gimans, the boat guys from Bay to Vin. They, everybody in the Miramichi knows these guys. 
And Roger says the story last Saturday saw the launching of the fishing boat Blue Magic. It's the first fishing boat to be launched at the Escumanac Wharf this year. This is 2000, March 31st. It is also the earliest launching to have taken place on the river in living memory. Well, if they had a boat to launch this year, they probably would have been able to launch it earlier than this. Congratulations. What a thing. The, the skill it would take to make something like this, and then you put that out to sea. It must be very proud, working with your hands, connected with the physical realities. Very important. There's some weird stuff with the kids now in school. Okay. And Raj keeps it coming, folks. Looks like I know this person. So we got some school winners announced, and we will talk about who these are. So, Scholastic Achievement, who was in this photo in the year 2000, what year was this? This was April 4th. Okay, the Royal Canadian Legion has released the names of the James M. Hill winners of the Branch Number no. 3 School Program Poppy Appreciation Award. We have Raymond McDonald, he was the president of the Branch Number no. 3 Legion. Natalie Pino, third in poetry in grade 10. Haley Weeks, Roger's old neighbor, First in essay, grade 12, Lynette Manderson, Logie Biller, daughter of Peter and Debbie, sister of Trenda and Marcia, and sister of the late Ashley. Uh, second in essay, grade 10. Back row, we have Sarvesh Prashad. She was third in the essay, grade 10. Billy Green, Mark Saunders, folks, Matthew Dinan. Andrew Williams, Mark is uh, the brother of my uh, good friend John. There's Mark Saunders right there, folks. A great guy. I haven't seen him in many years. I hope he is doing well maybe we at this time. Show that there. Maybe, oh, right maybe on. Comical for all the people that know these people. Yes, that's really excellent. So I ran in. This is one of the first guys I ran into when I got back to the Miram She, his son. I was at a little house concert. Yeah. And there it is, folks. Happy 25th wedding anniversary to Craig and Nancy Simpson. This is from April 2006. And Craig Simpson, Raj, is always just a gentleman. And his wife, Nancy, very beautiful, very elegant, and what a great couple, very nice people. And their children are Mark and Scott, and they're just a very good family. And congratulations to them on their 25th anniversary in, in the year 2000. Here's a nice little package honoring seniors. Oh, right on. Those of you young people that don't know, this is the same size as the old TV guides. You'd have to get it in the paper. In Miramichi, all of the TV listings would be in there, but this is a thing that had active living for seniors. Miramichi weekend, April 7, 2000. And who is on the cover here, folks? I will go in and see if we can find out who's on that cover. I don't know these people. I don't think so. It's very important to have community, even as you do get older, maybe even more important. Um, but what a great little issue. Yep. What a great little issue, Raj. Thank you for well, sharing. You know, a whole flock of young kids right here that... Can't the, find names. They're in the dancers. Dancers? Oh, oh right on. Dancers win top trophies and they plan a trip to New York. Once again, folks, the performing arts. Look at how important it is. Look how healthy these young students and young people look. They're out dancing. There's nothing that gives you a high more than performing live in front of an audience. You feel the exhilaration. This is before the advent of the smartphone. So these children did not have to deal with all of the repercussions that that's causing in our society right now and who was in this Kim McDonald, Shayna Olson, Andrea Davis, Christopher Knowles, Jenna Swain, Leah Logier, Natalie Carson, Jenna Raymond, second uh, Holly Lee, Desiree McDonald, Julie Hensby, Megan Voth, uh, Laura Swain, Jenna Olson, Ashley Carroll, Stacy Scott, Andrew Petrie, Amanda, I'm going to butcher this name, Gioia, Gioia, Sarah Gillis, there's the phone. Roger's a pro. He'll get rid of that person in less than 30 seconds. Kelly King, Aaron LaBerge, 
Aaron Black, Katie McDonald, Shannon Peach, Jennifer Hancock, Emma Flynn, Judy McCormick, Erica Butler, Amanda Cummel, one of the sponsors of the show, Roger's Daughter, Jessica LaBerge, Lindsay Singer, Tanya Daly, Matthew Hutt, and Stephanie Murdoch. And I'm gonna try to find Amanda. It's hard to see, the photo's not that great. But there it is, folks. And when I talk about these uh, smartphones, I am not, uh, Roger had to go up and do, deal with the phone. You know, there's no preaching or anything like that. It's just that one of the things that I'm doing in Vancouver is I am uh, part of several groups and one of my programs that I do with some young children is called Backyard Baseball. So it's kind of like alternative to, um, these are kids that never grew up in the system and played baseball or sports or anything like that. So I take them and, it, and, and I'm teaching them the game for the first time. This is an experience for them. They do other things, don't get me wrong. But baseball has been new to them, so I've been able to teach it, and I do it like in a backyard style, where you're making up the rules. If 10 people show up or seven people show up and different calibers and stuff, and uh, parents are not uh, permitted to be there watching. So it's kind of like kids are playing with other kids. They're figuring out, I am mediating it, and I am on the mound pitching and stuff like that. But it's one of the things that I study and talk about is the importance of play and how uh, it keeps diminishing as the years go. So anybody that's at my, you know, our age, or if you're listening to me like a Gen Xer or, uh, you know, obviously a baby boomer, you know, we grew up in an era where we had uh, free range. We were on our bicycles driving around villages and we had all this freedom to uh, explore and to play. And that's a very, in my opinion, a very vital uh, part of, um, uh, you know, becoming. And um, I study this subject, I talk about it seriously with other people in the education sector and whatnot. And, you know, one of the authors that I do read and I do listen to, he's a professor out of uh, NYU, I think. His name is Jonathan Haidt, H-A-I-D-T. He's looked into this very, very honestly and very seriously. He's a beautiful man. He's easy to listen to. And I've read several of his uh, books and I read his articles and stuff like that. But he's looked into what's going on with mental health with our children and our teenagers since the year basically 2012 is when it did spike and uh, you know the social media the advent of phones it he's really worth looking into if you're a parent out there that's concerned about that or this issue so that's why I mention that all the time and I kind of try to say it in a joking way but you know I'm not trying to preach or anything like that I'm so Raj you know what it took you longer to get rid of that person oh, yeah. than I, that I oh. thought I'm going to call from the dentist's office. Oh, right on. You're losing touch. Any uh, big uh, dental um, days coming up for you? One day. Uh-oh. Is it big or just like going in for a little checkup cleaning? Yeah. That's okay. It. Right on. I think it's the first time we brought up ringette. Ringette? Yeah, we haven't well, really. Uh, yeah. This is the team's here. Okay, so the Ring at Rally, dozens of teams play nearly 100 games here at Provincials this weekend. So Roger Como cut this out 24 years ago down in his basement to honor the sport of Ring at. We had a family member that was really good in that, and then Roger has some cutouts of some teams that participated. Well, we know the coaches anyway. Yes, and, oh yes we do. Okay, so here it is, folks. Here's some ringette teams. I will show, look at how healthy they look. Great looking squadron right there. And I don't know what the state of ringette is these days as hockey has escalated, which is really great. As You know, it's really great as well. So the Miramichi Petite River Rats, we had Alicia Hamilton, Jane Gorman, Mary Rose Connell, Sarah Jardine, Amanda Murray, Marley Russell, Celine Morin, Tara McDonald, Jenna Saunders, Jessica Taylor, Tara Stewart, Jennifer Rashore, Greg McDonald, Tina Poirier, and Tim Taylor. And then on the other team, we had Greg Savoy as a coach, Shelly Hanna and Tony McKnight, they were the coaches. Aaron Burns, these were the bunnies. Jenna Shattuck, Kelsey Waugh, is that how you say that? W-A-U-G-H, whoa, whoa, wah. Jenna McKnight, Katie Jardine, Holly Taylor, middle, okay, Olivia Murdoch, Lindsay Taylor, Stephanie Saunders, Brittany Kane, Heather Jameson, 
Jordan Hanna, Sarah Manderville, Jack Clark, Brittany Creamer, and then another team, Greg Savoy and Tony McKnight were the coaches, Brittany Daly, Megan McKnight, Caitlin Gorman, Sonia Lloyd, Lindsay Hanna, Keisha Murdoch, Nicholas Hart, Jessica Lawson, Kayla Savoy. Really, really excellent. Look at those great photographs. I hope you guys, I'm sure they had a great weekend. I'm sure. So these are the older girls. And these are some of the older girls in that tournament. Ring it, folks. I remember um, when I remember when Noni, our uh, cousin Nicole Como, was playing ring it. She was one of the top players in the province. She went on to participate in some national tournaments. She, but she preferred hockey, Raj. She yeah. was out there playing hockey with us guys, right? Oh yeah. Uh, and then let's read one squad. I'll read the middle squad. These are the River Rats. Uh, junior, we had um, Junior Bell Red. Okay, we had Erica Jenkins, Kathleen Sanford, Don DePlacy. Okay, I know Don. She was wearing the captain. Beth McLennan, Lori DePlacy, Amy Kane, uh, Megan Flieger. And then in the back, we had... Glenda O'Neill as a coach. Glenda Coach Ringett, I did not know that. She's been with sports her whole life. Terry Kane, Megan Duffy, Lee Jenkins, Melissa Rashore. Is that Melissa of uh, Logieville here? Patricia Obey, Louis DePlacy, and missing was Sheena McIntyre and Andy Loge. Is that Melissa? That's, that's Kim and I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And there's Melissa Rashore, I think right there. And she is the daughter of a Jackie and Margaret and the sister of the woman that just texted me today saying that she's appreciating our little uh, program here, Raj. We've got to show color, color photos. Some right? color photos of the Glacier Beavers assistant coach Wilson Bell operated the hole punch. Volunteers prepare for triple A provincials. And ladies and gentlemen, it takes all sorts. There's Wilson Bell. And then who are these guys right there? I think I recognize that guy right here by his face. Let's see if I'm correct. I'm thinking his initials are JW. Yes, it is. Head coach Jamie Watling helped string together tags. And parent Gary McGregor puts the finishing knot in a tag. They had some Pee Wee AAA. Beavers coaches and parents were busy this week preparing for the provincial championships and Miramichi was hosting. And there he is, folks, the father of Riley, I think it is, Jeremy and Derby Watling. There's Jamie Watling. I always found him a real gentle kind of guy in Logieville when I was a kid and a great athlete. Okay, in the year 2000, we had, ladies and gentlemen, um, Greg Malone is entering the Sports Hall of Fame. My question is, in 2000, what took it so what took so long? There's a picture of Greg right there. Former NHLer, scored 35 one year with the Penguins. Was a really good, really good uh, forward for many years in the NHL. Father of Ryan Malone. Played also for the Penguins and the Tampa Bay Lightning. And played horseshoes in Rogers' backyard. Uh, Mayor Machine Man is among five people who will enter the New Brunswick Sports Hall of Fame during induction ceremonies held in Fredericton on June 3rd. Greg Malone, a Mayor Machine. Uh, born in Chatham, his family, okay. But yeah, everybody that is a fan or that's been watching these knows of Greg Malone's career. Mayor Machine, Greg Malone, and they have a rich tradition of hockey in that family from Jimmy to Brad to Brett to Greg to uh, Ryan, and, uh, and their sister had a son named Brian uh, Harriman. He was a good defenseman through the system here as well. Oh, look at this right here. April 14th, year 2000. Josh Cummo's old teammate, Mike Matchett, wins the MJAHL Scholastic Award, folks. Mike went on to become a doctor. Uh, in Mon Is he still in Moncton? 
Mm -hmm. I think so. Mike Matchett of Miramichi has been named winner of the Maritime Junior A Hockey League Scholastic Award for the 99-2000 season. His first year student at University of Prince Edward Island plays defense with Summerside Western Capitals. He was selected for the award in recognition of his scholastic achievement and hockey ability. The award is designed to encourage players in the league to continue to give serious attention to their academic responsibilities. And Josh and Mike played on a team that won the midget triple-a um, uh, provincials in New Brunswick in the year 96 it was or seven yeah, I think 96. 96 or seven I think but anyway Josh and Michael ate up most of the ice time they would have been like one two whoever played more two defensemen and one was a right shot one was a left shot they were on the ice the whole huh. time that's a program. Oh, right on. And there's a program from the Miramichi Irvin Ironman Hockey Club, Bantam AAA, 99 2000. Roger Como has this program, and it's in his tray that we just showed. So anytime we open up a program, we want to know who was on the team. And I will leaf through this and uh, let everybody know. Like any good program, it mostly consists of advertisements, which is very important. So here they were, folks. The 1999-2000 Miramichi Bantam AAA Irvin Irving Ironman. We have the goaltenders, Lance Parker and a Tony Rabasha, Roger's neighbor. And we, as we mentioned before, Tony, son of Diane and Frankie, brother of Eric and also of Denise and Monique, a great sporting tradition in that family. And uh, Roger and I, we take credit for part of Tony's development because we took many shots on that kid out. And so on that team was Tony. Okay, so we had Kyle Barter, Brett Campbell, Justin Driscoll, Darren Harder, Bo Darren Hardy, Bobby Norton, Alain Savoy or Alan Savoy, Tim Sullivan, Timmy Bowes, Ryan Carroll, Brad Hamilton, Philip Loban, Sean Logier, Samuel Poirier, Danny Rashore, Lucas Savoy or Savoy, and Joey Trayer. Head coach was Harold Flieger, assistant coach Jeremy Guimon. The managers were Paul O'Hara and Marvin McCarthy. Thank you, Raj, for keeping things like this, and we can take a revisit back. Oh. Oh, look at this. Well, the activity there. We have to get that close up. Okay, Tommy's sweep caraquette and advance to the next round. This is the Hockey Tommies, James M. Hill. Members of the Tommies celebrate their win over caraquette. I'm going to keep. I know Tyson Way was on that team. He had both Tommy's goals, while Jason Keating and Greg Sargent added an assist each. Was Adam Como in net, ladies and gentlemen? Let's see if we can find if he was in net does not say in this article, but look at this great picture. We're not gonna name. That is a in a dressing room after moving on in the playoffs. Look how happy those kids look. It is Adam, right there. There's Adam Kummel right there, folks. The son of Clarence and Phyllis. Adam, I saw him the other day. He was another goalie that played road hockey out in Rogers Yard that we also take a little bit of credit and credit and help to develop. But what a great photo. There's nothing, if you've ever played, if you've never played hockey, um, being in the dressing room and in that culture, it's very special. You have to get there early. It's everybody puts on all this equipment. There's tape happening, sticks getting ready, making sure your skates are sharp. It's this amazing little thing that happens and I remember I was playing hockey out in Vancouver, Raj, in a little men's league thing. And there was this one guy that he never ever played hockey really before. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was okay. He was a good athlete. He could skate and stuff. But he kept saying, this is really cool. Like, it was his first time kind of in a dressing room and getting ready before a game. Like, he really appreciated that. So that was really cool. There's a program put into a car. Looks like a hockey card. Oh, right on. Oh, that's cool. Uh, Simon La Jeunesse, numero 31 pour les Wildcats de Moncton, in 99 to 2000. This is a program of the shape of a hockey card. Really good idea. They must have had a series of those each game. And there it is. And you know what? They, you know what it came with? It's a schedule. You know what it came with? A uh, magnifying glass. <laughs> okay, so Raj, we're at 53 minutes. Okay, we'll so get, we'll, we'll get a couple more in. Yeah. 
And anybody, we're hockey fans. This is Roger's personal collection. We're Logie Villers, hockey fans. And, you know, James M. Hill's on our side. So we're not trying to sway action that way, but that's the way it goes. And look at this, folks. Boston trades Ray Bork to Colorado on March 7th, 2001. Anybody knows that great Team Canada defenseman, uh, Boston Bruins for probably close to 20 years. I think maybe it was 19. He's in like the top 15 or 20 all time in NHL scoring as a defenseman. He never did crack the 100 point, but he was an amazing defenseman. He wanted to go and try to win a cup. Boston wasn't competing at the, the, that time. He got traded to Colorado. They did not win it. The next year he came back, and uh, anybody that's a, ho a hockey fan knows that he did hoist the cup in that year. And when he was traded, he was a five-time Norris winner. Ray Bork is Roger's number one pick on his... Uh, if, if Roger Como is picking an all-time team, Ray Bork is on his team as a defenseman because Roger always said that Ray Bork always hit the net. He wasn't hitting shin pads. He didn't need to take a slap shot if he didn't need to take it. We have a girl playing with these young lads. Oh, right on. Players prepare prepare for the Provincials. And here is a great sixum. And we will focus on a couple of people in this photo. Look at those healthy, healthy young players. And I will read the names out. You guys can probably read it right there. But we have Tyler O'Reilly, Matthew Hubby, Pamela Patterson, right on Pam playing with the boys, Cody Cormier, Lance Woodman, but we have a friend of the show right here, Ryan McDonald, otherwise known as Rock, son of Larry and Mary, and brother of the late Mandy. Ryan comes from a great sporting family, a great family in general, and he is a great, great guy. Um, what else? Let's mention uh, the bricks out at the base were being scheduled for demolition. Oh, yeah. All those, uh, oh, yeah. This was in 2000, eh? We don't want noisy ghetto set up right next door to us. <laughs> Holy. Okay, so remember that. That's on the eastern section of the CFB Chatham land, the northeast section. It used to be. There used to be these old brick uh, apartment buildings right there, and these were just getting set up for demo, and I think now there's new... Uh, structures being in, put in their place and as a side note right where that is if you guys know where that is where that bypass goes in uh you know connecting um you know chatham into the nelson newcastle area if you turn left uh if you're going towards the newcastle and you turn left you go into cfb i was up there during the eclipse not knowing that there was a massive event you should have saw the cars lined up people were actually sitting in their car getting ready to go to the eclipse they missed it they were in their car well, they probably looked out the window and saw it, but they missed <laughs> relaxing. Yeah. Oh, we got March 3rd, 2000. Isaacs and Bennett reign over James M. Hill. Winter Carnival. These are some pageant winners. A good old pageant. Are they still having pageants in schools these days? I don't know if that culture still exists. Who are these young people? Well, we're going to let you know right now. We have Lacey Lynch. She is the son of Greg Lynch, Raj. Yeah. Greg Lynch taught me one of my change-ups. Uh, Ryan Flynn. Uh, so Lacey Lynch was the second princess. Ryan Flynn was the second prince. Allison Bennett was the queen. Jason Isaacs was the king. And Mr. Nice Guy, Sarah Lloyd. Oh, and Mr. Nice Guy. And Sarah Lloyd was the first princess and Miss Congeniality. And Anthony Como was the first prince. There she is, folks. The queen of the pageant, Allison Bennett. And you know what, Raj? If my memory serves me correctly, she also won a pageant when she was in Dr. I think we read one where she won it in Dr. Loger. I could be wrong about that. That's Bobby Bennett's daughter, I think. Yeah, our local ad. Okay, uh, where are we at for time? I think we're gonna get close here. Can finish there? Uh, yeah, and then we'll just pick her up. Yeah. We got another. Okay, so we're, we're running out of time here. I gotta go over to our neighbor and uh, check in with her. I gotta go get a birthday card for my sister. Yeah. So this is from the Miramichi Leader Weekend, February the 11th, the year 2000. 
last chance for cabaret variety show and what is going on here folks um we have a excellent little section talking about some variety some local performers and i will read some names and then i'll talk about that guy in the cowboy hat uh entertainers ryan mclaughlin kelly king Leslie McLaughlin and Donald McTavish. There's Donald McTavish. He's the brother of my good friend Andy. Donald is a very talented uh, artist, musician. I think he lives in Fredericton right now. Uh, production crew members Dan Jardine, Adam Hayward, Will Doyle, and Greg Sargent. And there's Donald McTavish again right there. Look at how dapper he looks. We got some performing artists. And then we got this guy right here named Corey Fowley. And I went to a house concert the other night after the um, eclipse. And I went with Roger's daughter, Amanda. And Amanda said, you know who that is? And I was like, nope. And he's like, she's like, that's Din's son, Corey. And I was like, oh my God. So this kid grew up next. This is Roger's neighbor, Corey Fowley, right on. And speaking of Amanda, we didn't have time to do any uh, sponsorship uh, shows today, so we will do that uh, in a few days. I'm going to Boston tomorrow to watch my, before I go back to Vancouver, I want to watch my nephew. Uh, he's a left-handed pitcher. He's playing Division I baseball down at Merrimack College right outside of Boston. He's got two games on the weekend, so me and my mother, his Nana, will be driving down and um, checking that out. So what do you have planned this weekend, Raj? Anything big? Oh, just a dance Saturday night. A dance? Where is the dance on Saturday night? Knights of Columbus in Chatham. So, it's all, so the Knights of Columbus is always on Saturdays? Every second Saturday. Every second <laughs> Saturday. So where, where, are, where, where are some other dancing uh, locations again? Oh, uh, Underneath the bridge where yeah. the farmer's market is. That's called the Pioneers Club. The Pioneers Club in Chatham, where the old big spot, near where the old big spot used to be. Yeah. And every three or four months, they have an afternoon dance over at the curling club at the Cove. Okay. A couple hours in the afternoon. That's how you know you made it in this world. That's how you know you put your time in when you go to afternoon dances, folks. It's just like, you know what, can't be by, like, let's just do it in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah. But what do you think is the best val? like, what, what's your favorite part of the dancing? Like, is it the physical? Is it just the, you like moving? You're always a very talented dancer. Well... That's probably the best part of it, just just the dancing part. Like, but you get to you get to socialize with a lot of people. Yeah, and eventually, after a while, you be become part of the group. Yeah. yeah, well, it's a very healthy thing to do. It's like it's it's actually another free pill. We talked about these free pills of, but dancing and just moving like cultures do it. All, every culture in the world dances. They move to music. It's very beneficial for mental health and stuff like that. So yeah. I say bravo to you guys. What's your favorite um, location? Like, which one do you enjoy the most for ambiance and vibe and stuff? Well, they're all pretty close, you okay. know. Same there, <clears throat> but. Uh, the shortest distance for us there is just in Chatham there at the nights there. Right. Yeah. Oh, well, right on. Sometimes we had a few dances up in Newcastle. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, so on a Saturday, if anybody's driving from East Point down the back road on a Saturday night, the early evening, Roger will be all spiffed up out at the hiking corner by Kenny Blackyear's old house. <laughs> so you pick him up and drop him off at the Knights of Columbus. <laughs> we, we, we just might take in the dance tonight there at the White School in Nelson. Oh, yeah? That's uh, probably the only spot we never tried out yet. Oh, right on. So who kind of organizes it? There's different groups organizing and stuff? No, it's the singer. It's, uh, the, the, our singer... We follow him around. Oh, okay, so he he, he well, up performs. Up in Nelson now, there's a different group of musicians up there. Oh, right on. So I think uh, we're going to try to make, make that dance, and we don't right. know about tomorrow night. Well, right on, Raj. So Raj was a member of the Sanatoria Club, which uh, performed, and they had all these events over in, like, the 60s, 70s, which we hopefully we can unpack a little bit of that but i don't know how much we're going to be able to unpack in the next few weeks i'll be going back to vancouver in the first couple of weeks of may so we're going to try to get as many of these out as possible thank you guys for um 
given some positive feedback. We're trying to do it for a positive community building idea. We're doing it for each other. It's very therapeutic for actually both of us to sit down here and go through some times. And it's it's been a good experience, eh, Raj? That's right. Okay, so I'm going to head over to your neighbor and check out some of her beautiful paintings. Okay. Okay, we'll talk to you later. Over now.